kids, hey parents, grandparents, anybody else watching, all of our hometown kids families. We just want to pause here before we start with the program tonight just to say thank you for staying connected with us. We want to do our best to, to stay in your lives. We're going to show you several things throughout the program that you can be connected to that we're just trying to help you with uh, different resources. Uh, one of the things we're going to do, uh, we are going to uh, take the first 15 families that put your name in the comment below and uh, not only are we using that to help keep track of who's here and watching, but we're going to do that. The first 15, we're going to bring out the spinning wheel next week. I'm going to start off by spinning that, and that family uh, will win a $25 gift card uh, from Walmart. So when you have to go there to get uh, a toilet paper and all that stuff, you can uh, spend something on something fun, maybe a board game to play with your family. But uh, we just want you to know we love you, we're praying for you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Hey kids, now it's time for the Hometown Kids Announcement. First, make sure that you put your name in the comment box below and we will be sure to post $5 into your Hometown Kid bank account. Thanks for joining us. Hey, don't forget that if you want to watch on YouTube, just look us up, Industry Assembly. You'll find all our videos there. Hey, do us a favor and share Hometown Kids videos on your social media platforms. This gives you an opportunity to share Jesus with your friends. Hey kids, join us Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock for a special service with Pastor Kyle Joris. Many of you will remember him from last year's Kids Camp. Don't forget that this summer, from June 15th through the 19th, we will be taking a group of you to Kids Camp. That's right, last year's Kids Camp was incredible and this year's will be even better. So make plans now and save that date. Also, don't forget that this summer's VBS will be July 27th through the 31st. Our theme this year will be the Minion Olympics. All right, that's it for the announcements. Are you ready? My name is Brian, and I'm going to be your host for the Roller Coaster Life. I absolutely love roller coasters. I've probably been on a thousand roller coaster rides in my life. I absolutely love the tall climbs, the quick drops, the hairpin turns, the loop-de-loop, -loop, everything. Over the next few times we get together, I'm going to be traveling around the country and showing you some of the coolest roller coasters ever. It's going to be incredible. You know, as much as I like roller coasters, it's not always good when life is like a roller coaster. You know what I'm talking about. It's like everything's going great and you're riding high and then all of a sudden something bad happens and you go from the highest high to the lowest low. There was a character in the Bible who understood all about the roller coaster life. Now, I don't mean he actually rode a roller coaster, but what I do mean is he understood what it was all about to have ups and downs in his life. His name was Elijah. All those ups and downs made Elijah's life feel just like a roller coaster. Today, you're gonna to learn all about how Elijah got his start. He went from being a nobody in the middle of a small town to standing in front of the king as God's prophet. That is a huge assignment. Today, you're going to learn how God was faithful to Elijah through that whole experience. In fact, God was faithful to Elijah throughout his life. It was amazing. And speaking of amazing, I think it's time I took you to one of the most amazing roller coasters and gave you the ride of your life. Are you ready? Let's go. This is the powder keg. It's an incredible ride that launches you from zero to 53 miles per hour in just 2.8 seconds. Then there's an incredible 110 foot drop. 
Oh yeah, this is gonna be awesome. That was amazing. I tell you what, I can't wait for you to get into your lesson today, and you're going to learn about how God was faithful to Elijah, and he'll always be faithful to you. I'll see you next time on The Roller Coaster Life.
What's up? What's up? What's up? What's, what's up? up? Ah yeah, what's up everybody? It's me, the SKI to the double T L E S. Skittles in the hizzy, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we are talking about the roller coaster of life. You know, life is like that sometimes. Sometimes you up, sometimes you down. So anytime somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. I know God is faithful to me. That's right, through the ups and the downs, God is always faithful, baby. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. I know God is faithful to me, and that's what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor, and I'm living for my savior. Skittles out, baby. <laughs>
heaven, built the earth and sky, made the sun, the stars and the moon, and blueprints for you and I. God is our foundation, the Bible is our guide, we know with you we can do anything, you're always on our side. God, you are the master builder, you're building us one day at a time, and brick by brick we're following after you, and the plans you God created heaven, He built the earth and sky, He made the sun, the stars and the moon, and blueprints for you and I. God is our foundation. Bible is our guide. We know with you we can do anything. You're always on our side. God, you are the master builder. You're building us one day at a time. And brick by brick, we're following after you and the plans you have for our lives.
<laughs> What's up boys and girls? My name's Buster. You want to know why? Because I love busting stuff with my best buddy, Slappy. Ain't that right, Slappy? Oh yeah, we're going to teach you today's power verse. Today's power verse says, Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Oh my word, what a bustastic power verse. You know what's even more awesome than that? Getting the boys to stand up and say the power verse with me on the count of three. You ready? Come on boys. One, two, three. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Good job, boys. You can have a seat. Go on, take a load off. Now I need my girly girls to stand up and say the power verse with me and Slappy on the count of three. You ready, girls? Here we go. One, two, three. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Good job, everybody. You can have a seat. Boys and girls, did you know that life is like a roller coaster? You got your ups and your downs and your all arounds. And you can have all sorts of problems, like you got a busted toenail or your boogers are so big that they don't fit inside your nose. All kinds of weird stuff. But boys and girls, you gotta remember, no matter what happens, God is always faithful. He's always there for you. Now that you know that, I need everybody to stand up and say the power verse with me and Slappy on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Good job, boys and girls. You can have a seat. Hey, it's been awesome teaching you today's power verse. But you want to know what time it is? It's time to bust stuff. <laughs> boys and girls, me and Slappy love Mexican food, don't you? That's why we brought some salsa to spice things up a bit. Ready? Here we go. Three, two, one! Muy caliente! What's up? I know God is faithful to me. Hey, Pastor John again, and I know that I already told you, uh, we already took the offering, but I want to tell you about the missions project that we're doing, because it's very dear to my heart. A couple years ago, I got a call from a, a leader asking, hey, would the kids in your group help send some kids in Africa to a, a summer camp for a week? And so I said, yes, we would gladly do that. It cost $100 to send one kid to camp for a week, which is an incredible price. Living here in America, we pay way more to do all kinds of activities. But $100 for a week covers all of their travel, covers everything. Well, the pastor that did this, he got 120 kids. He didn't, he didn't hardly know 120 kids at that point. He, he just went from place to place to place asking parents, can I take your kids? Can I take your kids? Can I take your kids? And so he brought 120 kids to this camp. Most of them were paid for by our kids and, and hometown kids giving of themselves to send them. That camp, uh, for most of those kids, it was the first time they had ever seen a fork. Imagine that. It was the first time most of them had ever tasted meat. It was the first time any of them had ever seen or heard of dessert. And it was a little cup of pudding, and you should have seen them. It was crazy. 
not only did they get to experience many of those first, and they got to be at this camp, and man, they got to do all kinds of activities that they never would get to do in their life, climbing walls and archery and all, all kinds of crazy things that were just fun for kids. Not only was it a first for them to experience camp and all that camp is about, but for many of them, it was the first time that they had ever heard about Jesus. And before the end of our time together, many of them came forward to the altar and gave their life to Jesus. And I have continued to stay in touch with that pastor that brought all those kids. And many of them are continuing to serve the Lord. In fact, I've asked him to, to give some testimonies. And in the next couple weeks, hopefully we're going to hear from him and some of the kids that were at that camp. I want you to hear from them because it made a difference in their life. You may say, how do you know that so well? Well, because I had the opportunity to grow, go with a group of children's pastors and go to Africa and to be a part of that camp. But w when we were there, I had the opportunity to see with my own eyes the difference that our money was making in the lives of kids. And that's what it's all about. Sometimes we say, oh yeah, well, it's just a quarter. It, it's, it's just a dollar. But can I tell you, your quarters and your dollars are making a difference in kids' lives. Thank you for what you do to make a difference in kids' lives all around the world. Hometown Kids, you are awesome. I know God is faithful to me. Hey, hometown kids. This is Pastor Robbie, and tonight I'm going to be bringing you a story from the Old Testament in the Bible. The story is found in 1 Kings chapter 17, and it's a story about a man whose name was Elijah. No, not Pastor Elijah. This is Elijah from the Old Testament. The Bible says that Elijah was just a regular guy. He didn't have a lot of money. He didn't live in a big house. He didn't wear fancy clothes. He was just a regular guy. But he loved God and he served God with his whole heart. And because of that, God chose him for a special mission. Elijah was chosen to be a prophet. In those days, prophets were people who heard from God and had a message to send to the people. And God had chosen Elijah to send a message to King Ahab. Now King Ahab was the leader of the Israelites, but he had let his heart grow evil. In fact, he let all of the Israelites stop worshiping and following the one true God. They had started following after idols and worshiping other gods and false gods. One of the ones they followed was called Baal. Baal was known as the god of weather, and people began to worship Baal instead of the one true God of Israel. Now God had a very important message for Elijah to take to King Ahab. God wasn't happy that they were serving other gods. And he wanted the people of Israel and King Ahab to know that he was the one true God and that he controlled the weather, not the idol Baal, that God was in control of everything. So he sent a message with Elijah to tell King Ahab that God was going to stop the rain. There was not going to be rain or even dew in the next few years, that everything would become dry. God wanted the people to know that He was the one true God. You can imagine that King Ahab was not happy about this message. In fact, he was furious with Elijah for bringing such words from God. He sent his soldiers out to track down Elijah to kill him, and Elijah found himself running for his life. Can you imagine that roller coaster? One day he's just living his life, living in his town, happy as anything. And then, all of a sudden, he's running for his life. In fact, he's running for his life in the middle of a drought where there's no food, there's no rain, and he finally comes to a brook where he can have water. And he makes a little home 
next to this brook where he can try to live, but he was starving. It looked like he was going to starve to death, but he trusted God and God did something amazing. Just at one of Elijah's lowest points, God sent a whole flock of ravens to bring bread to Elijah. Every day, birds would come, bringing bread to him so he could eat. Every time he would get thirsty, he could just drink the water from the brook that flowed next to him. While everyone else in the world was starving, Elijah was being cared for, specifically from God. The ravens would come and bring him bread to eat every single day, and Elijah knew that was God being faithful. Elijah knew that God was taking care of him. Elijah knew that God was faithful and could be trusted. In the middle of those ups and downs of his life, Elijah knew that he could trust God, and God was faithful to him. Do you know, sometimes in our lives we have those roller coasters too. One day seems to be going great. The next day our friends don't like us and we're having all kinds of problems in our family. They happen every day. Ups and downs happen all the times in our lives, but we always know that we can trust God and He's faithful. Your love, love is worth living for. Your grace paid my way. Your mercy gives me the power to forgive like you forget. I'll stand, stand when it's high, Lord. I know you're on my side. You send me out to be your witness with power from on high. I draw all I need from you. song. I love that song. And I hope that you enjoy uh, having the opportunity to worship at home. Because it's not about being in the church. It's about being together. Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there. 
And it's just comforting to me, to me, for me to know that, that we are together in this moment. Hey, Robbie already told the Bible story. What a great story about the prophet Elijah. A, a guy who was really just an ordinary guy. Uh, a poor guy, just uh, from a small town. They used those words to, to describe him. But he was just a guy like us. Just an ordinary person going through life. And God called him to become a great and mighty prophet. And it just reminds me, and that's what our lesson is really about tonight, is just to remember that God can use anyone to do good things for Him. Man, I need to hear that over and over. God can use anyone. You know, as I was growing up, I have an older brother that's very athletic. And uh, so that made me, even though I liked to do sports, I wasn't as athletic as him. So, a uh, little bit down. I also have another brother, older brother, that's really smart. Well, that made me the not-so-smart brother. So there was lots of things. In fact, I was really short. And so all through my life, I was always one of the shortest kids. One of the kids always picked last to play sports. Any of those things, that was me. But I'm glad that God saw beyond all that. Because the world can see that and say, Oh, that little John kid, he's never going to amount to anything. But yet God said, I'm going to use John to one day pastor a church and pastor a group of incredible kids. I'm so glad that I didn't disqualify myself by saying, oh, God could never use me. God could use them. He could use my brother Rob. He could use my brother Mark. But he couldn't use me. I'm so glad that I listened to the voice of God when he said, John, I want to use you. And I hope that you guys can hear that because God wants to use each one of you. And what he did for Elijah in the Bible, the book that we can always trust, he wants to do for you. you no, know, Elijah was going along and it's like God made him into this great prophet and he got to deliver this message to the king and it's like, man, he's on the high of highs, but, but what happened? Are you listening to this story? Because in that story he went from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows and now the king is after him. The king wants to kill him. He's upset with him because he brought good, or he brought bad news about the kingdom. And so now he finds himself at the lowest of lows. And that, that brings us to the next point of this message, and that is that life is full of ups and downs. Let me see if I can illustrate it this way. I have a, a sheet of paper here with the memory verse on it that we just learned a little bit ago. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. You know, the world comes with all of the things that seem to be trials and difficulties, and they really can make us question this. And it's like, no, but my troubles are really big. They are, no, you don't understand my trials. They're, they are awful, and they are worse than anything. And it just, it seems like our trials and all of that, they just want to burn up the promises of God. They just want to destroy it so that we forget that Jesus has come to help us through that. You know, here's what I want to do. I want to show you. I brought a balloon and a marker. And I want to show you. I'm going to put a little air in the balloon. We're going to tie it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to write down some of the things that are trials. All right? So first of all, boy, we need to write this down. We need to write down the cor coronavirus. Because that right now is a definite trial. Okay? That's something that all of us are dealing with. And it can really be overwhelming. Like, oh, no, we're gloom and doom. 
you know, trials and tribulations. What are we going to do? You know, there's a lot more things besides disease that comes along. You know what, let's just say, because that's what's going on, but let's, let's also add on here. You know, I, every one of us probably knows someone who just gets sick, not sick that they're going to die, but sick. And some people, they, you know, they get cancer, and sometimes that cancer, it, it can kill them. Uh, and, and, and they become very, very sick from it. And, you know, sometimes there's, well, there's war. Okay? Sometimes that happens in our world, and we have war, and, and we have, oh, we have famine, just like in the story that was about to happen. Okay? We have famine, and there's, there's people who are starving to death, and kids who are, are hungry. So we have all these bad things that are happening. But you know what? Let's get a little closer to home. Sometimes we, we, we go through this. We're really sad. So we're just going to put sadness. doesn't matter what it is. It can be all kinds of things where we feel down and depressed. And, oh, here, here's something. Sometimes we're affected by this because of divorce. Maybe our family isn't together like we would like it to be. And it just seems that all of these things just become, and you know what, we could write on this balloon until it is completely covered, because that's how many bad things are out there. But I want to tell you something. God is bigger than all of these things. So what I want to do, I just want to put the fire right back to it again. Ah! Did you see that? I hope that it caught that, because out of the fire, Popping that balloon with all of those bad things. There it is. The very thing that we thought was destroyed wasn't. Because God's word cannot be destroyed by sickness, by the coronavirus, by cancer, by the bad things that happen. God's word is always true. And it always stands. And there is good news. I can trust God because He is faithful. And if I had to do that slide, I would say because He is always faithful. In the story, God proved to be faithful to Elijah through the highs and through the lows. The roller coaster that we're talking about. Life has all of those ups and downs. God is faithful in the good times. God is faithful in the low times. And God provided food and water for Elijah by, by providing water in the middle of a drought and by having birds bring him food. What a crazy thought. Can you imagine that maybe, maybe God had those birds steal food from people? Where'd my food go? Where's my burger? Gone! But yet God provided for Elijah miraculously by having them bring the food. And God will be faithful to you. God will be faithful to your family. But here's what we have to do. We have to trust Him. We have to put our trust in Him. If we don't trust Him, I don't know what we're going to do. We have to put our trust in Him. Have you ever seen anybody do a trust fall where they say, Hey, go ahead, I'll catch you. And then they want you just to fall straight back. That's what trust is. It's trusting that that friend is going to catch you. Can I tell you, God will always catch you. He's never going to go, Ha ha, I let you fall. That's great. God will always trust you. Or God will always catch you. But you have to trust him through the highs and through the lows. God will always come through. I want to pray for us tonight. Father, I just thank you for every young person, every boy, every girl, every mom, every dad that have gathered around phones and, and tablets and TVs to, to hear your word. And Father, today, tonight, I pray that you will let them know that even if life right now seems to be a low for everyone because of this virus, that you are still in control. And 
we can still trust you. Father, I pray for each one here. And I pray that, that they will just come to this place and say, Lord, I trust you. In fact, would all of you pray this with me? Dear Jesus, I put my trust in you. I know that I can count on you, that you will always catch me. So I trust you, and I love you. Father, I, I just pray for families right now. I pray that you will just bless them through this time together. Give them opportunity to grow closer in their relationships than they have ever grown before. I pray that you will do great things in their lives and their families and show them that they can trust you to take care of them, even through these times. And Father, I pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can you hear my birds chirping in the background? Someday I'll show them to you. God bless. Ladies and germs, what's up? I know God is faithful to me. Blessings.